welcome back. Well, I'm going to head straight into our final sessions because we've got some really excellent stuff coming up in this last segment of the day. So I'm going to kick things off with a look at a fantastic collaboration between the World Special Olympics and Xbox. But before I welcome our presenter to the screen, let's watch a short film on the World Special Olympics and this unique collaboration. When we play together, everyone wins. Watch Jason Tatum, Jamal Charles, and others team up with Special Olympics athletes in the Gaming for Inclusion Celebrity Showcase. Catch it live September 18th with Xbox on Twitch and Special Olympics YouTube. So there's a quick look at Gaming for Inclusion, which is the collaboration we're talking about. And so I'm delighted to welcome, by video link from the US, from Microsoft, head of Xbox Social Impact, Jen Panatoni. Jen, so lovely to have you with us. Now either she's not that happy to be here, or she's frozen. But possibly we lost her for the moment. Okay, well, whilst we're just waiting to see if we can get her back, I'll just tell you a little bit more about the Special Olympics. So the Special Olympics is a global organisation. I think it's one of those organisations that we've all heard of, but you might not be familiar with their work, particularly because they're from the US. So they are actually a global organisation. They work globally, and their mission is to create a more inclusive world for people with intellectual disabilities. And they actually work in over 190 countries and territories. And so the, par the partnership that we're looking at today is they decided to venture into esports, which is something quite different for them. I think it's something that we haven't seen. And obviously, esports and uh, Olympics in general is a bit of a sore spot. They're obviously not a huge fan of us, although they're trying to make it work. And so the Special Olympics have actually been pioneering how this works. And so they partnered up with Xbox to make gaming for inclusion, which was something bringing esports into the world. And I think we've got possibly both our guests. So I'm also delighted to welcome by video link from the US, Vice President Business Development Special Olympics, Chad Jones. And of course, as I mentioned, from Microsoft, head of Xbox Social Impact, Jen Panatoni. Hello, welcome. I hope you're actually both here. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> Fantastic. Here. Thank you. Now, I'm so excited to have you here because this is a really fantastic collaboration. I think it's one that really speaks to the power of what esports and gaming can achieve when you pair them up with organizations like the Special Olympics. So, Chad, the first thing I wanted to ask you was, I maybe heard I was just talking a little bit about the mission of the Special Olympics. So, with such you know, a, a powerful goal, what for you made Microsoft such a perfect strategic partner? Well, thank you so much for having us, um, and I'm so thrilled to be here with you uh, right now. Sorry for my technical difficulties, uh, <laughs> but I appreciate you uh, being patient with me. Um, as you said, my name is Chad Jones. I do head up our global partnerships team, and you know, before I answer why Microsoft is such a strategic partner for Special Olympics, I think it's important to really understand why we do what we do. Um, so, as you noted, Special Olympics is a global organization that's working to end the discrimination against people with intellectual disabilities. Um, currently, it's estimated that there are more than 200 million individuals around the globe who do have an intellectual disability. Um, this type of disability is often associated with autism or Down syndrome or several other variations. Um, and so, unfortunately, this population is actively discriminated against and often denied uh, their basic human rights, from a lack of access to equitable health care, education, and even employment opportunities. So Special Olympics uses sport as a vehicle for change. We provide a platform for those who do have intellectual disabilities to showcase their abilities on and off the field. Um, additionally, we bring those without intellectual disabilities into our world. We create an immersive, unified experience um, to really help to break down uh, the, the biases and the misperceptions held against these individuals who have intellectual disabilities. So when we think about why Microsoft is such a strategic partner for Special Olympics in our inclusion movement, um, I could probably go on for several, several hours about <laughs> why it's a good fit. Um, but briefly, I'll kind of summarize in the fact that it's an investment technology brand and its people. Um, first, Microsoft has been a partner of Special Olympics for more than seven years. Um, their investments have scaled our work. They've helped us to expand our brand and our reach through our world games, our youth leadership programming, even commercial marketing. Um, from a technology perspective, they've really played a crucial role in helping us to achieve 
um, the scaling of our efforts from programming worldwide. So we are in over 190 countries and being able to reach individuals effectively, efficiently, is a huge need for all international NGOs. And that's where Microsoft has played a huge role in helping us reach our key segment audiences, like educators who want to do more to bridge the divide between those with intellectual disabilities and without. Um, from a brand perspective, we, just like any other corporation or nonprofit, are trying to scale our brand so that more households know who our movement is and what we're trying to accomplish and why it matters, why it's important. And being able to team up with a trusted brand like Microsoft plays a huge role in helping us to introduce ourselves to those emerging groups. And last, it's people. People like Jen Panettone are our ambassadors. These are individuals who have dedicated themselves truly in accessibility and inclusion. And I think Microsoft, and I'm not just saying that because I love these folks, but I'm saying it from the <laughs> standpoint that they really go above and beyond to make their workplaces inclusive while also trying to create inclusive opportunities for their consumers. So I think that's where we as Special Olympics like to team up with like-minded organizations who see uh, the value in all individuals and also want to do something about it. So that's my answer. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Now, Jen, for you, I think it's fair to say that Microsoft has a really strong reputa reputation for accessibility, particularly when it comes to Xbox. You know, that's something that we've seen Xbox have a genuine, authentic commitment to outside of its partnership with the Special Olympics. So why did esports feel like the perfect way to build on that reputation and to, to you know, add to your partnership with the Special Olympics? Uh, it's a great question. It's honestly one of my favorite questions. And before I even start, Chad, Chad is one of my favorite people. Working with Special Olympics <laughs> is honestly such a highlight for you know not only myself, not only Xbox, but Microsoft all up. So we're always so proud to partner with Special Olympics. And you know specifically why esports. Xbox really believes that gaming is for everyone. It's something we all strive for every day, it's something we all work hard to do every day. And we're committed to making Xbox a place that's welcoming and inclusive of all players. So when it comes to our partnership with the Special Olympics, you know, you've heard Chad mention, you know, inclusive over and over again. That's something we absolutely believe in too. And the partnership with Microsoft and Special Olympics started way back in 2014. And we're excited to extend that partnership as Xbox with a focus on gaming and for hosting gaming for inclusion. Um, you know, I particularly, I'm super proud of this partnership. I produced the 2018 and 2020 versions of this tournament. I'm super excited to see what gaming for inclusion really brings to the table. And the tournament, you know, it's a meaningful and important step to making esports more approachable and more accessible and it gives the athletes a new way to compete you know in especially in 2020 when traditional sports were canceled the special olympics reached out to us and said hey is there something we can do we thought we have esports we have the teams we have the technology let's see what we can make happen and to see you know 2018 evolve into 2020 and then 2020 evolve into gaming for inclusion i am so proud and thrilled to see this um that's, I think that's my answer. Got, got more questions? <laughs> I do indeed. I've got one last question for each of you. So Chad, I'll throw to you first. I just wanted to quickly ask for you, what's the biggest legacy of gaming for inclusion? Ooh, what's the biggest legacy? You know, I love that question and thank you for that. I think when we look at the legacy for gaming for inclusion, there are so many different opportunities. Um, Jen's team, uh, especially, uh, we were very like-minded in the sense that we're brainstormers and we're very aspirational. Um, what's been amazing, um, sad because of the pandemic, but we've seen an acceleration of esports and gaming across the Special Olympics organization and movement worldwide. Um, we've seen our local affiliates here in the United States who are facilitating huge gaming tournaments on their own. Um, we've seen great collaboration between groups from Chile and Portugal who are facilitating their own competitions. And as we look at the future, we'd love to see a continued integration of some of those projects that Jen was just mentioning from 2018 and this uh, platform for creating maybe hybrid opportunities of both in-person and virtual. I think where we have the greatest opportunity is further removing that level of isolation 
uh, and creating even more universal opportunities to connect. Because, by the way, that's one of the best things about esports is that it is, in fact, a universal language. And we can connect individuals who are speaking um, so many different languages or perhaps are non-communicative. Um, but giving them the opportunity to rise and be brave in the attempt. And so where we see the legacy, I do think there's potential for us to connect to some of our marquee events, creating some of our own stand-up opportunities, um, but also being able to stay true um, to building on kind of what we have the capacity for while also scaling on an annual basis. So as long as we have our good friends at Xbox and Microsoft, I think the sky's the limit. And Jen, for you, uh, we're right at the end of the session, so I don't want to squeeze you, but I do want to hear your thoughts on what you consider the legacy to be. Oh, geez. I mean, Chad really summed it up really well. But for us, you know, it's really about furthering the mission of increasing, you know, representation, accessibility, and approachability to Xbox and also to esports. Um, the business is continually working to drive in the accessibility space. You've seen things like that with the Xbox Adaptive Controller, with Copilot, which allows more than one people or more than one person to play with uh, one controller. And we also partner, obviously, with nonprofit partners like Special Olympics, whose missions align to deliver. You know, one of my favorite things I always like to talk about with this tournament is back in the 2018 tournament, it's such a unique way for people to connect. Um, we had unified partners in that tournament, and the, the individual who won, Tim, his unified partner, Nick, you know, at prelims, that's where they met. And that's where they qualified and they actually had ongoing practice sessions up until finals and if you listen to tim he would say you know i didn't just gain a friend i gained a brother and so it's a really really important way to really drive home the fact that gaming is a fundamental human need and play is a fundamental human need not for some but for everyone so we're hoping, again, that this Gaming for Inclusion event can make esports more accessible, more approachable, and provide athletes with another way to compete and also stay connected. I myself have a standing video game meeting, if you will, every Friday, and it's my way to connect with my friends, especially <laughs> during this time. So it's a really, it's a positive way for people to stay connected, get that competitive sense in, and really just have a fun time and be welcome in gaming. I might add just one quick point on that too. Um, because of Jen's team, we also have the ability in this proof of concept to scale. Um, and when I say mm -hmm. that, I mean being able to really bring in and collaborate with several other brands. And so in this experience, because of our learnings from 2020, as well as what we're planning this year, we are starting to collaborate with other entities like WWE and Toyota and really scale the efforts. And so honestly, I think Jen's team has um, shared their strength in a huge way that not only creates a new platform for Special Olympics and its athletes, but now also a new way for us to collaborate with celebrity ambassadors and influencers, being able to integrate brands um, that might not typically see a connection point with Special Olympics, but are looking for an entry into esports and gaming. And now we have a platform that's brought to you by and presented by the Xbox and Microsoft family. Fantastic. Well, it was so lovely to speak to you both. What a really inspiring project. I can't wait to hear more. I hope there's lots more to come. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's have a huge round of applause for Jen and Chad. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I have to say that's a really lovely one. And as ever, Microsoft genuinely have a fantastic reputation with accessibility. They've got some fantastic products. Do check them out if you're somebody who runs esports tournaments. If you're somebody who needs to make your tournaments accessible, Microsoft have you covered. Now